Well, hey guys, and uh, welcome to another video. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a little while. I don't know, within the last two weeks or so that I've done a video. Uh, and somebody asked me the other day why that was. I don't really have an explanation for it. Sometimes I just have a little bit of a break. Um, but this video is one I've been waiting to get to for a little bit because I finally have enough pickups for the last few weeks to uh, to do another one of these. Uh, and I'm going to start in this one with the video games. I don't usually do the video games first. I usually consider my video game purchases to be my highlights. So I knock out the movies first. But this time around I only have a couple of games and I have a few more movies and movies I'm a little more excited about. So we're going to start off with the uh, with the games that I picked up. And I'm going to start off with these two. I'm going to show them together. These are a couple of soccer games for the Xbox 360, as you can see, 06. This one is in much smaller print, but there it is, Germany 2006. Anyway, this is FIFA 06 Road to FIFA World Cup, 06. This is FIFA World Cup Germany 2006. I assume this one says it's on its way to World Cup, and then this was it. Anyway. The reason why I have these games, these very old soccer games for the 360, I'm not a big soccer fan, nor am I a, a fan of soccer games, but the reason why I picked these up was because they were cheap. Uh, I do believe that this one was two bucks, this one was five bucks. These are brand new, still in the seal. I bought these at the Walmart that I work at. I have been at this Walmart since 2011. We've had these games since then, and I'm sure that store has had them since they came out. It just blew my mind that not only were these games still available to purchase in a Walmart store all these years later, but they were, until they were marked down recently when I picked them up, they were still $30 games. Um, so when they were finally dropped down to a cheaper price, I decided to take some of that stock off of our own hands, and I bought these for $7 combined. We had two copies of each. One of the other games sold, and then the other, the last remaining soccer game, still sits on the shelf today. I bought those a couple weeks ago, too, by the way. And then I also picked up this game for the 360 called Dark. Uh, two reasons why I bought this game. One, it was cheap. I think I paid around six bucks on Walmart.com once again. If you go digging on Walmart.com, you'll find some really cheap previous-gen games. Uh, second reason why I bought it was because uh, an, a YouTuber that I watched by the name of Minx, she played this on her channel sometime last year, maybe. And while I didn't watch the entire playthrough, uh, it was interesting enough to me, and she liked it. Uh, so I just thought, you know, once I found it cheap, I, I didn't think I could pass it up. So it's just another game to add to the collection when or even if... I will, uh, I will sit down and play it. Remains to be seen. Uh, only complaint that I have on this is uh, there's a little bit of a ding to the package. But uh, otherwise it was fine. Alright, now we're going to get started on the movies. I have five Blu-ray movies to show off. And we're going to start with Alice in Wonderland. And uh, the reason why I picked this one up was because, once again, it was relatively cheap. Fifteen bucks on Blu-ray. Uh, this is also what I would consider to be my favorite old-school Disney movie. Um, old-school, I would classify as 70s back to, like, whenever this was made. This is a 60th anniversary edition, and it's been out for a few years. But anything that Disney did uh, in animated movies from, you know, the time that this was out through the 70s. Then I have what I consider to be modern times, which is 80s up to today which my favorite animated ones are Lion King and Mulan. It's like a, a tie between the two. And then if I had to pick my favorite Disney CG movie, not counting Pixar movies, I would go with Wreck-It Ralph. And then if I was to uh, rate my favorite Pixar movies, I would probably put Monsters, Inc. as my favorite. But I really haven't seen as many of the Pixar movies as I should. Okay, the next movie that I have up here is Vanilla Sky with the cruises on the cover, uh, Lock and Lips. Uh, this is a Tom Cruise movie that I always wanted to see along with Magnolia and it just recently came out for the first time ever on Blu-ray and it was also I believe like eight dollars at Walmart um, so I just decided to pick it up and uh, eventually I will watch it. 
All right, the next movie that I'm going to show off is actually kind of somewhat bittersweet. Uh, it kind of pisses me off when releases like this are put out. Um, even though I have to have it, I'm just one of those kind of people. But uh, and I and I really hate also that that Walmart has a lot of these movies with these stupid stickers on them. But this is X Men: Days of Future Past, the Rogue Cut. This is the movie that I've already purchased and own and it sits over on the shelf um, this is that same movie with about 16 or 17 minutes of edited out footage put back into the movie uh, mostly that has to do with a storyline that revolves around Rogue who she's the unfortunate person who got the sticker all over her face so <clears throat> what pisses me off about this is I like to use Peter Jackson as an example he did Lord of the Rings movies, The Hobbit movies, King Kong, probably some other movies, but those seven movies alone, he released them all as in theatrical releases, and then several months later, extended, director's cut, yada, yada, yada. But at this point, I know that he does that. This, I had absolutely no idea was going to come along. I never would have purchased the first version. I haven't even watched my Blu-ray copy of it. I saw it in the theaters. I've seen the movie but I've never watched my actual Blu-ray version of it. I could have saved that money and just got this when it came out, because this includes both that new Rogue Cut and the theatrical version. So, oh, they got me there. But like I said, at least with someone like Peter Jackson, I know what he's going to do, and I always wait for the extended versions. But anyway, enough of the griping. Uh, the last two movies were probably the two things that I was looking forward to the most. Uh, the two that make this kind of the highlight of this particular pickups. Anyway, the first movie here is Maggie, and this is the new Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Um, and uh, Abigail Breslin plays his daughter in this, and this movie is about a different kind of take on the zombie apocalypse or, you know, a zombie epidemic of some sort. Um, I haven't watched this yet, but... Uh, I know that basically what happens is, in this version of zombieism, people don't just die and then spring back to life as an undead cadaver that wants to eat everything. It takes time. It takes a lot of time, enough time for a lot of people to be able to say their goodbyes. And, and uh, in, in the case of this one, Arnold's character has to deal with seeing his daughter going through this transformation. I don't know if you can see it very well on the on the cover there, but she's her eyes are starting to mess up. She's starting to get that veiny look. So I'm really really excited to see it because I want to see the unusual take on on the genre, but also because uh, Arnold has gotten some pretty good reviews for this dramatic turn. You know, everybody knows him for his action roles and his kind of goofy comedy that he does, but uh, I'm sure. Uh, I, I can't think of any time when I've really seen him in anything that might show he has expanded acting capabilities. So, looking forward to that. I almost watched that tonight, but instead I decided to watch this last movie, and I'll be doing one of my recent viewing videos for it here as soon as I'm done with this. But this was the one I've been waiting for for months now, ever since this came out in the theater. Ever since I saw the trailers for it and a few of my friends went and saw it and said it was pretty good, I've been waiting for It Follows. And this is kind of unusual for me. I've already done my Blu-ray collection videos. I'm sure if anybody's watched that, they realize I don't have a lot in the way of horror movies. Um, and when I finally do my DVD collection videos, you'll see the same thing. There's a few, but horror just doesn't really do it for me. It's not my favorite genre. It's I'll probably talk more about it when I sit down and talk about this, but I just, I kind of like, I don't mind happy-ish movies that don't always have the happy ending, but horror movies are like, they're unrelentingly sad slash frustrating, painful, intense all the way through, and then they don't always have the happiest of endings, and it's kind of a bummer all the way. Uh, plus, if a, if a scary movie is really scary, then uh, that's kind of that's kind of a pain painful thing to have to go through for an hour and a half to two hours of being on the edge of your seat and panicked and yada yada yada. Uh, whether or not this movie did that for me, you'll just have to watch that video. But 
I will say that I'm glad that I bought it, and uh, I'm glad that I'm able to show it in this video. But that ends this particular group of pickups. Um, I, I, every, every one of these videos at the end I say, I don't know when I'll have another one to do. I don't know when I'll have another one to do after this one either. Uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, I'm very, very happy with the stuff that I got here, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.